Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I got a little project we're working on, and uh, this is uh, for a viewer, Tom Domino down in, in Florida, and he has a Monarch 10 double E lathe, uh, very early, early 1940s version, uh, with the round dial on it. If you guys are familiar with 10 double E's, you probably know what I'm talking about, but he is in the process of restoring that machine, and uh, had a couple of parts he needed uh, some help on. I've actually already made a couple of pins for him on that project, uh, but he sent along this little, uh, gear segment here uh, that he needs as well. It has a couple of broken teeth in it. And uh, this, I'm not exactly sure where this goes on the machine. I actually have the exact same model 10 double E that he has, but I haven't torn into mine yet and gotten down to find any uh, any parts like this. But anyway, this goes something with the, uh, the uh, automatic reversing mechanism, uh, thread re reversing mechanism from what I understand. And um, evidently, this is a common problem on that particular Model A with these gear teeth to be stripped out. Let me uh, zoom you in here, show you what we got, and uh, let's come up with a game plan on how we're going to go about uh, taking care of making a new part. So this is the part right here, and basically what you got is a flat piece of stock, has a hole in there. There's actually a bushing that goes down in there, a bronze bushing from what I understand, uh, and a shaft that comes through that. These two holes are, uh, I think, where pins go through, where it indexes it into something where this actually rotates. And you got the gear teeth out here on the end. And this is designed to just do a small turn. It doesn't make a complete turn. It's just making a couple of degrees of a turn uh, to adjust something. And again, I'm not exactly sure uh, how it's going on the machine over there. So a couple of just observations about this. First thing I want to do is, you know, what material was this originally made from? And it's pretty easy to determine that. In this case, uh, this is cast iron. And I can tell that, uh, number one, looking at the broken teeth, you can see the grain in down in there uh, of the cast iron. Uh, cast iron is a little bit grainy and tippy. It has a unique look. It looks different than steel when you have a, uh, a break like that. But uh, even a bigger giveaway is the sides of this. It's all rough casting. So I suspect that when uh, Monarch was making these parts that they probably had a piece of metal that was cast long in the shape and they just sawed off little pieces. The outside of this uh, on the three sides was just left a rough casting. It was not a machine finished surface. It didn't need to be. All they needed machine was the gear segment and uh, the, the hole here uh, was really all that was uh, needed. So that's, that's what they did. So as far as making a replacement part, I've talked with Tom and we have decided we're going to go back with cast iron on this. And, you know, the question will come up, why not make it out of steel? You know, because, you know, cast iron, it, it will break. It's, it can be brittle, you know, that's one of the down parts to cast iron, down, downsides to cast iron. But in many cases, that's also a positive uh, because in this case, I suspect, and I don't know this for, for a fact, but I suspect that this was designed to be the weak link in the design. So that if something broke, it was this piece here and you could easily replace it rather than having to uh, a gear break off down deep in the machine where you had to tear the whole thing apart. So, you know, I'm sure there was some engineering that went in to decide what material to make this out of originally. And, uh, you know, making it stronger is not always necessarily the 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 right answer, uh, because if you make this part stronger, well, something else might fail someplace else, and that could be a bigger problem down the road. Again, I'm speculating, but I kind of suspect that's the case. Regardless, uh, he decided he wanted to keep it as original as possible, so we are going to do it out of cast iron. And uh, the material that we'll be using is some Durabar. This is some uh, cast iron material that you can get that's uh, basically a continuously formed cast product. It gets it in bars and sheets and whatever. It's just a rough material that you can machine stuff from. Um, this part did give me some challenges, though, figuring some things out. So, you know, when you're cutting gear teeth, you need to know how many teeth you have in a full circle. And in this case, you know, how many teeth do I need to have is a little bit difficult to calculate because I don't have a full circle. I can't just go in here and count the number of teeth all the way around. I've only got a, you know, an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, whatever that is of, uh, of teeth to work with. So I had to figure out 
what is the spacing between those teeth? And 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 I I, I became a little bit of a detective to come up with that. Uh, you know, I know that from working with gears that you have the diameter of the of the gear. And, you know, based on the pitch, the diameter will change with the number of teeth. So as, you know, you need first need to figure out what pitch this is, then you figure out how many teeth it is, and you can calculate the diameter. In this case, what I did was I calculated what the diameter, the outside diameter of the circle was. I knew how many, what the, the teeth, the pitch was, and from that I was able to calculate the number of teeth. Now to determine the pitch, I, I cheated. I've got a set of pitch gauges here. These are made by Boston Gear. And uh, basically you have a rack um, gear in here for all the different pitches and, and they're stamped to tell what pitch they are. And you can just go through these and figure it out. And this one here happens to be a 24 pitch. So I knew the pitch. Next I need to determine the diameter. So I did some calculations here. You know, the diameter would be twice the radius. The radius would be from the center of this hole out to, to the outside diameter here. Really couldn't measure from the center, but I could measure from the edge of the hole to the outside edge there with my calipers. So I knew what that measurement was. I could measure the diameter of the hole. I took half of that, the radius, plus the, uh, this measurement, twice of that's the diameter. So I was able to ca determine what the actual diameter of this gear would have been. And in my case, the outside di diameter came to 3.336 inches. And then just by doing the math, and I've, I've got a, a spreadsheet here that I use to, to kind of cheat on this, but the uh, outside diameter is determined by the number of teeth plus two d divided by the pitch. So I knew, knew the, uh, the uh, uh, pitch, I knew what the pitch was, I knew what the number, or knew what the outside diameter was, so by basically I created a formula to, ca to calculate that, and I was able to determine that the number of teeth was 78. And that came really close to that outside diameter. So I measured 3.336. The actual calculated is 3.336, three. So I was off by three thousandths. That's well within the tolerance for a gear of this diameter. So anyway, basically long story short, we figured this out, 24 tooth, uh, our 24 pitch, 78 teeth uh, was what we need to, to cut these on. So my job next is uh, let's uh, get our piece of stock ready and we're going to get this thing set up. You guys will get to see how we're going to cut this. So the thickness we've got of our part is 435 thousandths roughly. This is a piece of half inch. Um, it's actually a little bit less than half inch in places. Probably depends on where you measure it at, but I'm, this the thickness is probably isn't that that critical. I think we're going to be fine. We got enough material in there. We can clean this up, but uh, it is a little bit wide. Um, and what I'm going to do is I actually just drew a line on there. I'm going to go over to my bandsaw. And we're just going to cut this off, and then we will take this to the surface grinder, and I'm going to grind the two sides two uh, sides parallel to one another and try to shoot and get that same um, same thickness as what we have here. So let's go over to the bandsaw and, and get this thing cut to the proper, or close to the proper width. I'm going to leave it a little bit wide and we'll mill it to the actual size or grind it one. I'm not sure yet. Over here on my dual saw. And we're going to see if we can uh, saw this right off. over on the surface grinder now and we're getting ready to grind this uh, bar in. I want to start as always by dressing my wheel. I've got a cluster diamond on there. It has multiple diamond nibs on that little stob that's sticking up and I'm just going until I 
feel some grit coming off of it and we're just gonna go a couple of passes across this dress that wheel get a nice good edge on it nice and flat all the way across that should be good take our diamond off Wipe that down and I'm just gonna put my uh, bar up on here. We'll turn the mag on. That's got it mag down to the plate now. And I just wanna just clean this up. Uh, and then we'll flip it over and grind it parallel. And then uh, I'm not gonna have a whole lot of extra material here. I may not be able to get it completely clean to leave it exactly the same thickness as the original, but we ought to be able to get close. All right, I'm touching off there. All right, let's turn some cooling on here. And we'll let it start feeding across. We'll let that work its way across and uh, feed down a couple of times until we get a fairly good surface there. I don't think it's going to take a whole lot. This uh, cast iron Durbar material is just basically uh, cut out of the bandsaw to a thickness, so it's fairly rough cut, but surprisingly uniform at the same time. So. Uh, Hopefully it won't take a whole lot to get this to clean up. We're already cleaning up on the backside all the way across. Looks like it was a little bit tapered, uh, but a couple of passes, we should have it clean. And I'm gonna feed down about two thou and we'll cut back across it. Go another two thou. We're slowly working it out. So far I've cut probably five or six thou off of it. So it's, it's coming out pretty quick. All right, let's take another two. This will make about eight thou total that we've taken off. That is gonna pretty well clean it up. I see just a couple of lines down here in the backside, but I think what I'm gonna do is just leave it like it is. We're gonna flip it over. If I have some extra material at the end, um, I can always come back and try to take those out. Another thou will easily get that, but uh, we're just going to leave it like it is for right now. I'm going to turn my magnet off. All right, we will uh, mag this down on the side we just ground. And we should be able to just continue on. Our height really hasn't changed. We just flipped it over. So, uh, Let's just start it back up right where we left off. If I need to do these down feed, a couple of thou. All right, we're going to take it down two more. First cut was a little bit excessive, but it'll be all right. Right, here we come. 
come back across again. We're getting really close here to the uh, having it cleaned up on both sides. This path may get it. It might take one more, but shouldn't be much more. So we're cleaned up except for just a little bit down here on this end. I think what I'm going to do is stop right here and get a measurement on the thickness and just kind of see where we're at and uh, make a decision on where to go from there. So uh, go ahead and pull this off. Go ahead and pull this off. Ah. So our original piece is about 435,000. Right now here we are at about 436. So we're within a thou of the same uh, dimension. You know what, I'm gonna just take another thou off and we're gonna see if we can get that little bit of scratch out right there. I'm just gonna dial in another thou down feed. We'll make one last pass across here. And I think we'll be uh, we'll be done on the thickness of this. I think we're going to call it good enough. Pull that out of there. So the next thing I want to do is uh, get these two rough saw and bandsaw sides parallel to one another. This thickness or width, I guess, right here is really not that critical. Uh, it was just a rough casting on the original, but uh, I want to get those bandsaw marks out. So I've got a transfer block in here that just kind of helps me get it up square if you're not familiar with the transfer block the magnetic flux will go through this so not only is it magging down on that side it's also magging down on this face in here um, and just kind of transfer the magnetism up and we will use that that should get it fairly square again it's not critical that it needs to be perfectly square the original is just a rough cast finish but i just want it to look nice and uh, just look a little bit better than what it does that's all this is about and i'm gonna Probably do some fairly rough grinding on this. This is the uh, side that I cut on the bandsaw, so it's a. Uh, both sides are rough cut bandsaw. This one's probably a little bit rougher than the other side. It was cut on a setup where it should have been a little bit straighter. I was freehanding this one. But uh, again, I'm just trying to get it where it looks a little bit nicer. And I'm not even worried about the finish on this. I just, uh, I'm not surely not worried about it being square or anything. I'm just doing some rough grinding here to straighten it out. I think that's got that side cleaned up good. I am going to let it just go back across that on a lighter pass. All right, we're going to flip it around now. Mag that one down, and here we go again. 
this side theoretically should um, clean up a lot easier. This is a more of a straight cut that was made with the bandsaw and it was sitting on this side. So, and it looks like it's gonna clean most of it up on the first pass. I'm just gonna get a rough measurement on this. And the original is about one inch, 275,000. So we got really about another 50,000 that needs to come off of this uh, to get it down to that thickness. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grind it off. And again, <coughs> I think I'm just gonna <coughs> make fairly uh, heavy cuts here and just get it knocked out. I'm gonna get another measurement here. Should be getting down fairly close. Yeah. According to that, I got about 10 thousand still to come out. Here we go. Well, there's our finished uh, piece, all nice and ground to size. So. Let's just uh, double check our work here. Our thickness of the original was 435 roughly. And we got this right there, 435 right there, about the same thing within a thou anyway. And again, our, our width in this direction, this is a rough dimension, this is a rough casting, so it's gonna vary depending on where you are, but about a one inch 275 roughly. 270, 275, and we're we're right in that same ballpark here, so that looks good. Finish is great, nice ground finish, just like the original. So um, I'm gonna pretty much be done with uh, this episode of the video. Uh, we'll be coming back later on uh, and getting the hole drilled in there and getting this turned to the proper radius on the outside and cutting those teeth we're going to be doing that in the upcoming episode but uh there you go grinding a uh, piece of uh, cast iron stock to size and there it is uh one nice piece of stock to work with now uh we'll come back and finish this up a little bit later on i've just ran out of time very limited amount of time to get out and shop this week but hope to be out here this weekend and get a good bit of work done. My plan here is that we will make several of these parts. Uh, when I go to cut the gear teeth, I can put them all together and just kind of cut them all at one time, rack them or stack them all together. So I'm gonna basically cut as many parts out as my piece of stock will allow. And uh, I can send one down to Tom. I'll have one that I can keep from my lathe restoration. I'm not sure if I need this part or not, but hey, I'm gonna go ahead and make myself one. And if anybody else needs one of these parts, uh, you can contact me and ah, we, maybe we can work out a deal there as well. We'll have a few spares that we can help out some other users with. And uh, with that, guys, that will be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, those comments and thumbs up are appreciated. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.